His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa met with the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, at his residence in Abu Dhabi on the occasion of his visit to the UAE. His Majesty the King and His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid exchanged friendly talks on the deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE and the keenness to bolster and develop them to serve common interests and aspirations. His Majesty the King and the UAE Vice President expressed pride in the strong fraternal relations, cooperation and coordination at all levels. His Majesty wished UAE and its people for the progress and prosperity. His Majesty the King and UAE Vice President also discussed the latest regional and international developments and topics of common interest. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to Bahrain following a visit to the United Arab Emirates where he met the UAE President His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and the UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Dubai Ruler His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. His Majesty the King and UAE leaders reviewed the long-standing solid Bahraini-UAE relations and ways to enhance them across various fields in addition to the latest regional and global developments. His Majesty also led the Kingdom's delegation to the Riyadh Summit between the Gulf Corporation Council and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the ASEAN, hosted by Saudi Arabia. His Majesty the King also headed Bahrain's delegation at the Cairo Summit for Peace, which was devoted to discussing the latest developments and future of the Palestinian cause, as well as the peace process. His Majesty also visited the United Kingdom, Italy and the Vatican City. His Royal Highness Grand Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the newly appointed French Ambassador to Bahrain, Eric Gerard Tilme, at Qadabir Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of Bahraini France relations, which continue to grow through multi sectoral cooperation, noting the importance of consolidating the bilateral partnership across all levels to achieve mutual aspirations that benefit all. His Royal Highness welcomed the newly appointed Ambassador and wished him success in performing his diplomatic duties. During the meeting, issues of common interest and regional and international developments were also discussed. In this regard, His Royal Highness noted the significant weight France holds on an international scale, recognizing its pivotal role alongside allied countries in safeguarding regional and global safety and security, which are essential to economic development. For his part, the French ambassador expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting his commitment to furthering by bilateral relations to meet mutual aspirations. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Hamad bin Faisal al-Malki, also attended the meeting. In implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King and under the patronage of representative of His Majesty the King for humanitarian work in youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the National Committee dispatched the first Bahraini aid shipment to the people of Gaza in the presence of the committee's members. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that the dispatch of the first Bahraini aid shipment to the people of Gaza embodies the support of His Majesty, the Honorary President of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, and His Majesty's humanitarian initiatives towards broadly countries, which reflect the firm and clear position towards the just Palestinian cause and the broadly Palestinian people. His Highness expressed thanks, appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty the King and noted the Foundation's honor to implement this directives. His Highness praised the great support that the Foundation receives from the governments headed by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. His Highness stressed that Bahrain stands alongside the Palestinian people in Gaza and their ordeal and its support to alleviate the painful affliction during the difficult humanitarian conditions they are experiencing as a result of the ongoing war in Gaza. His Highness said that committee prepared a shipment of urgent relief aid in implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King, praying to the Almighty God to rest the souls of the martyrs and grant recovery to all the wounded and injured.
Bahrain's parliamentary division delegation headed by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed al Msellem, participated in the launch of the 147th IPU General Assembly held in Angola. The President of Angola, João Lourenço, delivered a speech in which he expressed pride in his country's hosting of the world's largest parliamentary gathering, firming support for IPU's efforts to discuss issues that contribute to the development and progress in countries. He praised parliamentary diplomacy and and its efforts towards achieving international peace and security. The Speaker of Angola's National Assembly, Carolina Sakira, delivered a speech in which she welcomed the participants, stressing Angola's keenness to support the Union's efforts to promote peace, security and stability in all countries of the world. The Council of Representatives Speaker and Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division and Head of Bahrain's delegation participating in the Inter-Parliamentary Union General Assembly and the accompanying meetings, Ahmed Lim delivered a Bahrain's speech before the IPU General Assembly. He affirmed that stability will not be achieved in the Middle East without securing the legitimate rights of the badly Palestinian people. He stressed Bahrain's firm position under the leadership of His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in supporting the Palestinian cause. He called on members of all parliaments to work together for peace, security and stability to prevail in all countries and societies. Al Msellem stressed that Bahrain's parliamentary division supports His Majesty the King's uh, categorical rejection of the displacement of the Badli people of Gaza during his speech in the Cairo summit and the importance of securing urgent humanitarian corridors to bring the necessary aid into the Gaza Strip while emphasizing that the two-state solution is a real guarantee for coexistence in the region. The speaker praised the president of Angola's speech at the opening session in which he affirmed his comprehensive support for a peaceful political solution to the Palestinian cause. He reiterated Bahrain's affirmation that the best way to resolve crisis and overcome challenges is through respect for international law and non-interference in the internal affairs of countries. Bahrain's parliamentary division participated in the meetings of the 212th session of the Governing Council of the Interparliamentary Union. The council meetings witnessed the election of the President of Angola's National Assembly, Carolina Sakira, as President of the 147th IPU General Assembly. First Deputy Speaker of the Shura Council, Jamal Fakhro, affirmed the support of Bahrain's parliamentary division for the election of Carolina Sakira to head the 147th IPU General Assembly. The Secretary General of the Representatives Council and Secretary of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Councillor Rashid Bunajma, participated in the meeting of the Association of Secretaries General of National Parliaments. The Councillor affirmed that Bahrain has taken advanced steps towards studying artificial intelligence and applying it in various fields in accordance with the vision of His Majesty the King, which is represented in adopting modern technologies, including artificial intelligence. He stated that the General Secretariats of the Shura and Representative Councils have launched many initiatives and projects that contributed significantly to the development of the smart mechanism for preparing session minutes. Bonetma stated the digital transformation mechanisms kept parliamentary work going during the corona pandemic, adding that many initiatives have been launched to enhance e-services and provide a safe digital environment that ensures the continuity of remote work. The chairman of the Legislative and Legal Affairs Committee of the Shura Council and member of the IPU Committee on Respect for International Humanitarian Law, Dalal Zayed, participated in the committee meeting held remotely. Al Zayed stressed the need for the committee to focus on the individual as a human being, regardless of nationality, affiliation and religion, indicating that the committee specializes in examining how to protect the rights of vulnerable. She affirmed Bahraini's, ad Bahrain's adherence to its 
its firm position of calling for peace and coexistence and adhering to the principles of dialogue and a peaceful and civilized approach as the only way to settle disputes and provide security, development and prosperity for the region. She emphasized the committee's need to pay attention to criminal justice, facilitate the availability of health and medical services in areas witnessing armed conflicts, pay attention to the rights and conditions of children, women and the elderly and provide the necessary protection for medical staff and hospitals. As I noted that the subject of displaced people from countries and regions witnessing armed conflict must be given serious attention and research by the committee. The Representatives' Council held its weekly session chaired by the second Deputy Speaker, Ahmed Garada. He expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for affirming Bahrain's firm stance in support of the Palestinian cause. The Council approved a draft law amending Article 180 of Decree by Law No. 55 of 2002 on internal regulations of the Shura Council. It also approved the issuance of the statements commending His Majesty the King's efforts to achieve peace in the region. A proposal on deciding the promotion of civil servants subject to the provisions of the civil service law was also approved. And the presence of Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl al bouainain and the Minister of Justice Islamic Affairs and Waqf Nawaf al Mauda, the annual scientific forum titled The Development of the Legal Regulations of Guarantees in the French Civil Code was held. The forum was organized by the Institute of Judicial and Legal Studies in Bahrain in cooperation with the Center for Studies and Law and Justice in Arab Societies in France and the presence of specialists from various judicial, legal, economic and academic academic institutions in Bahrain and a number of Gulf countries. The participants stressed the importance of countries in the region to study comparative experiences to work on the legislative and institutional development of all forms of guarantees, including guarantees of transferred values. The Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed Mbarak Jum'a, announced that the ministry rescheduled the registration dates of new students. Dr. Jum'a unveiled that registration of first grade students for the 2024 to 25 academic year will be opened from October 30 to November 16, adding that the children born between January and December 2018 will have to report to Ministries Hall in Asa Town from 8 a.m. till 1 p.m. He pointed out that registration will be reopened again after that for those who may miss the scheduled date and the current registration provides more time for the ministry and parents to register children early and well before the start of the next school year. He added that the ministry will also benefit from planning and preparing for the new school year by knowing the numbers enrolled in education early. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, visited Huawei Technologies headquarters during his official visit to China. The minister toured Huawei's headquarters and was briefed to the latest technologies and innovative solutions offered by the company. Several meetings were held with senior company officials to discuss future cooperation opportunities in multiple fields, including developing technology infrastructure and promoting digital technology. The positive results reviewed by the cabinet during its weekly meeting on the increase of the average wages of Bahrainis in the private sector reflect Bahrain's success in unifying efforts towards achieving the economic vision of 2030. The indicators showed an increase in the average wages of Bahrainis in the private sector on an annual basis by 5.9% during the second quarter of 2023. The indicators expressed the cabinet satisfaction following the positive results that drive economic growth by increasing the productivity of the private sector and making the Bahraini citizen the ideal choice for employment.
in line with Bahrain's urban expansion plan and infrastructure development and providing the appropriate environment for citizens and residents. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid Al Hajri, inaugurated the Fatma bin Ahmed Jour Mosque in Bugawa. Al Hajri expressed pleasure with the inauguration, praising the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow up and support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in building and maintaining places of worship. He also praised the donors and members of the Ajur family for building the mosque, which consists of a main prayer hall for men that can accommodate 880 worshippers, a prayer hall for women that can accommodate 120 worshippers, and an events hall and service facilities. Startup Bahrain recently organized the 7th edition of the Startup Bahrain Pitch event in cooperation with the Ministry of Industry and Commerce and Tim Keen and the Economic Development Board and the Bahrain Development Bank. During the tour, four Bahraini startup companies presented distinguished projects belonging to various economic sectors before the jury, which included a number of local and regional judges. The Meteorological Directorate at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications announced that a low-pressure system is approaching the kingdom which will bring unstable weather conditions with a chance of thunderstorms, strong winds and heavy rains on Thursday. The Directorate explained that the low-pressure system will cause rainfall during the day and thunderstorms from over the neighbouring areas accompanied by strong gusts of winds and the kingdom may be affected by these gusts, especially the marine areas. The Directorate called on the public to follow bulletins and warnings issued through its official channels. In implementation of the directives of His Majesty the King and under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Bahraini humanitarian relief aid arrived at Al Arish Airport in Egypt. Bahraini humanitarian relief aid was delivered to the Egyptian Red Crescent in preparation for its entry into the Gaza Strip to deliver it to the Palestinian Red Crescent, which will in turn distribute it to the Palestinians in Gaza. On the occasion, the Secretary General of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, praised the royal directives of His Majesty the King in sending the shipment of urgent humanitarian relief aid to Gaza and the support the foundation received from the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He praised the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser on the humanitarian work carried out by the RHF. He stressed that the first shipment contains 40 tons of medical food and relief materials to provide the basic and necessary needs of the Palestinian people. He noted that the Bahraini National Committee for the Relief of the Palestinian brothers in Gaza will undertake many initiatives and efforts to support Palestinians based on the fraternal relations between Bahrain and Palestine. GCC foreign ministers regretted the failure of the UN Security Council, the UNSC, to adopt a resolution aiming at ending the escalation of violence in Gaza. This came in a letter sent by Armani foreign minister and president of the current session of the GCC ministerial council, Bader El Busaidi, to Brazil's permanent representative at the UN, Sergio Dense, whose country holds the current rotating presidency of the UNSC. GCC Secretary General Jassim El Bidewi said the letter covered a recently announced GCC pledge worth 100 million US dollars to offer relief aid to the Gaza Strip. He voiced the Council's willingness to continue working with the UNSC to adopt a resolution that would put an end to international resolutions, treaties, and laws, including UNSC's Resolution 242 of 338, which reflects international consensus on the bi state solution. He quoted the GCC foreign ministers as having expressed readiness to meet with Brazil's permanent representative and UNSC members in New York in this regard. He also quoted him as having underlined the necess necessity of seizing hostilities, observing international law and international humanitarian law and immediately releasing hostages and detainees.